policed it to hundreds of our women on Black Friday, arresting us, manhandling us, sexually abusing us, arresting innocent women for marching towards Parliament to get women the vote. Two women died from their injuries. Emmeline Pankhurst and I were held back, forced to watch while suffragettes were being hurled about like rag dolls. I intervened when Constable B700, who was violently beating one of ours, recognised me. He tried to run off before I chased him down and demanded his badge number. I complained directly to Home Secretary Churchill about him and the police brutality that Churchill himself sanctioned that day. He never replied. After you women incited the violence. Us! The state came ready to fight that day, now we are ready to fight too. Window smashing, attacking property, oh, at, least, at least they actually arrested me that day with the others, before having to release us all without charge. Be thankful you're my goddaughter, so that the government, the police, even our royal family, cannot easily reprimand you. Whilst my fellow suffragettes are being arrested repeatedly and must suffer the consequences of being jailed. Emmeline Piper, Elizabeth Garrett Anderson, Ada Wright, Una Dogdale. You would do well to keep clear of such horrid company. I'm not abandoning my heroic suffragette sisters. Heroic? Putting their lives on the line. While your straw lies, defacing your sense <laughs> Yes, I wrote right across it. No vote, no sentence. Since women do not count, we refuse to be counted. Then being hauled into court for not paying your tax. Yes, I say no taxation without representation. If I'm not getting the vote, I am not paying taxes on my carriages, my servants, my dogs. Oh, you're a champion dog breeder. Focus on your Pomeranians, your lorikeets, your parakeets. Whilst bailiffs ransack my home and steal my jewellery. Then respect the law. No matter, my suffragette sisters won my jewellery back for me at auction. You are such a sweet girl. As I said in my court statement, once the women of England are enfranchised and the state acknowledges me as a citizen, I will of course willingly pay my share to it up. The fire a woman's place is in the home, alongside her husband. You proved it wasn't. I'm not married, and very unlikely to be. Strangely, the Indian princesses aren't really catch in British high society. Spend less time breaking the law and you'll find someone. Besides, I was always the last wife. Albert, not me, was head of our household. You were also Queen of England and he your subject. Even as Queen, I took my duties as a wife and a mother very seriously. Oh, a happy marriage. Nine children, 42 children, and empress over an expanding empire. I dare say no man would have ever ruled as effectively as you. When I was always caught between public and private roles. We women are not allowed to be breadwinners when thrown only crumbs. You as a woman managed it all. We women must dislike these masculine positions on politics and business. I did daily. As a man, Albert naturally grew fonder of it all. But ma'am, you knew your politics and no male politicians could ever take advantage of you. If I was able to bear my position as queen, it was only because of my husband. And later because of your daughters, your unofficial personal secretary. You involved them in your political affairs, and they've since gone on to do you proud. Princess Louise fighting for women's rights and championing education for all. Princess Alice, Princess Helena. While my son, Bertie, became king. He wasn't even your firstborn. Princess Victoria was. He was my eldest son. And our monarchy respects the law. My sister Bamba had to move to America to study to become a doctor. She couldn't become one here. And they soon even there threw all the female students off of the medical course. Quite right too, your majesty. Both you and Prince Albert were delivered by Charlotte Heydrich von Siebold, the very same German female doctor. And look to the heights to which you both rose. The reason she assists still entrusted with many European royal births. In fact, when you gave birth to Prince Leopold, you used chloroform. Oh, the chloroform, the lack of your medicine. Your choosing to use pain relief meant that other women could choose it too. I am no poster girl for your cause. 
No. But as Princess of Punjab, I want to use my position, my power and my privilege to lift up other women, to fight for equality and justice. If women claim equality with men, they will become the most hateful, heathen and disgusting of beings. They will perish without male protection. Perish. We will flourish. Sophia, sever your support for this heinous, erroneous cause. This is a cause that all us women should champion. Especially on my turn. One that needs to reach inside of these royal palaces and beyond. When your father abandoned you all and ran off to Paris with his young lover, who took care of you and your siblings? Why did he abandon us? If it wasn't for what the British did to him as boy Maharaja of Punjab. Careful. You sound just like him at the bitter end. Two years after you sadly passed, I finally visited Punjab. I long dreamt of visiting my motherland where my grandfather, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, ruled. Where my father, Maharaja Dalit Singh, was denied the chance to rule because the British exiled him and took everything he and our family owned. We gave your father, your family, and you a very comfortable life. Everything was taken from us, including who we are. My siblings and I are still piecing together broken fragments. My father died before he could even hold the pieces. He lost his way. I fear you're losing yours. After you passed, Catherine Bamber and I visited Delhi to mark the coronation of King Edward as Emperor of India. But we were denied passes, snubbed in British circles. Instead, we were treated like the Indians we are. <laughs> mistrusted, monitored, followed by spies. Whilst I was there, I saw a grand statue of you. Not of my father, nor my grandfather. Of you. All around the statue, I saw famine, poverty, the brutality of a people suffering under the British whilst I lived a most comfortable life. And yet, all of those Indians were cheering us as Maharaja Ranjit Singh's granddaughters and Maharaja Dalit Singh's daughters. They celebrated us as their own. Avaz Dor! Avaz Dor! When they shouted, Avaz Dor! Give us a voice. I knew what I had to do. Bring down the empire I fought so hard for. I want the British to stop treating women and Indians as third class citizens if they even treat them as citizens at all. Find a nice wealthy husband. Settle down with your dogs, enjoy the home life. I fully could not. You showed me what was possible for me as a woman. However long it takes, I will use my position, my power, my privilege, and yes, my home, these royal grounds, to give voice to the suffragette and colonized Indians straight from the imperial heart of it all. You're embarrassing yourself and humiliating me and the king. I will not stop until women and Indians win equality. Keep overstepping, the king will throw you out of there. <laughs> Invite a right royal scandal. I'm still your goddaughter. No, you are your father's daughter. You ruled over this nation and its empire. One day, as women and Indians, we will be free to rule over ourselves. Votes for women! Free India! It was fantastic, wasn't yeah. it?